we will now create our main JavaScript module. Our main JavaScript module will be the general purpose file that externalizes the most frequently used JavaScript tasks throughout the entire website. The beauty of the modular approach we will be taking to JavaScript is that you get a nice extensible framework that you can build upon very easily by yourself or with others. And most importantly, you will understand every line of code being called into your pages. Okay, open your index.php file, which is the home page of your website. Go to File, Save As, and just name this new file test.html. Save. And I'm going to get rid of all of the data within the body element and all of the data within the head element. Now within the body element, I'm going to place three divs. So I have div1, div2, and then div3. Now in the head element, we'll open up a script element. Now pop this function into place. It's function underscore. The name of the function is simply underscore. Now in JavaScript, the only two characters I believe you can use in JavaScript are the dollar sign or the underscore. If you try to use any other characters in there, you're going to get a syntax error. So you can use either dollar sign or underscore, whichever you choose. I'm going to use underscore. And this function takes in one argument, which is whatever element ID that, that we want to pass through the function as a string. And what the function simply does is it runs the document.getElementById method for that variable. And it returns it to the line where it is called. So what you can do is, let's grab this script element up here. Let's go down under our divs and let's open up a new script element. Now let's see if I can use my getElementById function named underscore to target div1. So I'll say underscore open close parentheses. And inside of the parentheses, I pass the parameter that's going to be picked up as x when it runs through the function. The parameter I want to pass is the string div1, which is the ID of my first div here on page. Then I simply say dot inner HTML is equal to howdy doody pilgrim. So if everything goes right with our document dot get element by ID dynamic selector function, we should get the string howdy doody pilgrim placed in as inner HTML into div1. So press F12 to test, and there you go. Howdy doody pilgrim, that string, got placed into the inner HTML of that div. So let's target the next two divs. Just change this to div2 and div3. Now this will show you how this function is running dynamically for any uh, elements that you want to select. Make these say something else. Press Control S and run that in your favorite browser. So there you go. You get Howdy Doody Pilgrim, Hello World, and Pi is Good. Now, like I said, you can make this a dollar sign. And then now this will look very familiar to you down here. Doesn't it? Yes, that's the jQuery type selector. But we're going to make ours underscore because I don't want anybody getting confused between the two different systems. Ours is going to be a very modular system, whereas jQuery is a a very heavy one file solution. So let's make sure this says underscore again. And that shows you how you can create a dynamic function that we're going to externalize right now. So let's take this function, control X and remove it. Let's go to file, new, JavaScript. Press control S. And if you don't have a JS folder yet for JavaScript files, create that now. JS. And inside of it, name this file, this new JavaScript file, main. So now you have main.js and you just paste in your document.getElementById selector function. You press control S and then here you just make sure that this script element has a source attribute or in the JS folder we have main.js. And you can bring this right back up here and that shows you now that main.js is a module. It is in fact the main module of our website and it's going to also get some more functions that we're going to place into it like toggle function because you would want to open and close boxes on your website or maybe slide them in and out on probably most of your pages. Nowadays when you want to show people some content that's not readily visible on the page, you want maybe a magic box to pop up, some HTML content full of whatever you want, just magically appear. Maybe you want it to fade in or slide in or whatever like that. You're going to need some kind of toggle mechanism 
So we're going to have a toggle function in here as well for our content containers on our website. And we'll make that part of this main.js module because it's also something that's going to be used pretty frequently throughout the whole website. So in test.html, if you run this now, you should still have uh, your selectors functioning. So let's run it. And we sure do. Everything is working really nice. When you want to use document.getElementById, and maybe you have to use that 10 times within one little script on a page. You don't want to have to write that in every single time. You can just use a small selector like that. And actually this function in main.js, it can be named whatever you want. You can name it X. You can name that capital D. If you want to name it capital D, that's fine. You can name it get lm by id if you want to. But it's best to keep that a very, very short name like underscore. Okay, you can close test.html, and in your index.php, what you want to do is, before the head tag closes, you want to call the main.js file, because main.js will be used on most every page. Now take index.php once again, go to File, Save As, and now you're going to save this as Sign Up. This is going to be the page where your Sign Up registration form is going to be, so you can change the title here to Sign Up. And you can see that we're already tapped into our main.js. And on the sign up form, you know, the form where people are going to put in their uh, username, create their password when they initially register to the website. Now, in your form, if you want to have things like fading effects, sliding effects, expand and retract effects, which my form is probably going to have some fading effects, and it's also going to use the ajax.js that we created. So we have to go and grab all of these JS files, and they're already created, so we don't have to go through that process once again. We're just going to go and grab them right now. Okay, go to developphp.com, and in the JavaScript video tutorial section, we're going to first grab the Ajax, if you don't have that already, from that video we did yesterday. Here it is, Ajax.js, so I'm just going to grab the code just for that. Go into Dreamweaver, where I have main.js, I'm going to go to File, Save as, Ajax, Save, and then replace the code with what I have in my clipboard. Press Control S. This Expand Retract, let's grab that one. These are Expand plus Retract animations. So let's just grab that code for the Expand Retract.js module. Press Control C. In Dreamweaver, you go take ajax.js, file, save as, expand, underscore, retract, save, and put the proper code in place, and press control S. Now let's grab the auto scroll animation, because we might use that one as well. Let's see, auto scroll.js, let's grab the code for that, control C, take expand, retract, go to file, save as, auto scroll, save and put the proper code in place. Control S. And here is the JavaScript HTML5 custom fade animation. And it says this code is for the external file named fadeeffects.js. So let's grab that code. Control C. File. Save as. Fadeeffects. Save. Press Control A. And then Control V to paste in the code for the fade effects and control S. Okay, now take fade effects, auto scroll, expand, retract, Ajax JS modules and FTP them up to your live web server into the JS folder. If we go to file, open, you can see our folder structure. We have our index page here in our root folder and we have the images folder, the style folder, PHP includes and now JS with these one, two, three, four, five modules that you want to FTP up to the web into this JS folder. Now in the next video, part six, we will have actually inside of sign up, let's remove everything within the body, press control S, and in the sign up page, we're gonna have main JS loaded in, and we're also going to load in fadeeffects.js. Ajax.js. So this page, signup.php, 
is going to use Ajax and maybe some animations that we choose. I won't even use Expand Retract. I'll just use Fade Effects in my form. Well, I'll see what I want to use when it comes time to make it. But like I was saying, the Sign Up form, the Forgot Your Password form, the Login form, those are the things that you might want to give Fade Effects that correspond to your Ajax requests in your forms. Whatever you want to do. And I know how you guys like to use your frameworks, so you can also just use whatever frameworks you want in place of uh, these modules if you'd like to uh, go a different route with your JavaScript. So in part 6 we'll begin creating the user interfaces, the initial forms for your website.